A few weeks back, Pete Buttigieg was, uh, he was experiencing a lot of pressure to be a little bit more forthcoming about the way he was raising money for his presidential bid. People wanted the media to be able to go to his fundraisers. They wanted his bundlers, the people who've raised a lot of money for him to be made public. And finally, after all of that pressure, he said, yes, I will let the media into my fundraisers and here are my bundlers. And he gave them out and it was an interesting list. But it was shorter than it should have been because it turns out that he omitted about 20 high profile bundlers and only now we're finding out who they were. Mm -hmm. They include uber wealthy supporters such as Boston power broker Jack Connors Jr. who declared he was quote, all in for Pete Buttigieg in a June fundraiser invite. And Hollywood producer Jordan Horowitz whose films include La La Land, which I quite enjoyed. Uh, Buttigieg also omitted hedge fund investor John Petrie, William Rahm, Senior Managing Director at the private equity firm Centerbridge Partners, Nicole Levant, the former US Ambassador to the Bahamas, and former US Ambassador to Italy, John Phillips. The latter two were also major Obama donors. And we do know one of his recent fundraisers, um, the partners or spouses of a number of uh, Silicon Valley uh, tech CEOs have also become big fans of Pete Buttigieg. So we are learning more. But it's a slow process and they're not making it any easier than it has to be. I remember when he was gonna start becoming more transparent after he said he was gonna be the most transparent candidate. Um, and then he was forced to become more transparent with the background and the business issues and all the things with donors. And as soon as it happened, and again, as I mentioned during our interview uh, with uh, Jonathan Metzl, I said, I'm the pessimist here. I was like, there's gonna be a way that he's not gonna tell us everything. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's a politician, of course he's not gonna tell us everything. So this is just the beginning of that becoming exposed. And by the way, hey, he's been so blatant with, um, saying, yeah, no, I'm not gonna go that way. Yeah, no, it's whatever, I'm gonna find on that. And yeah. blowing people off at events, just say it, bro. Just say, no, I don't care. I'm gonna show you all of my donors. At least you'll be honest, and yeah. maybe you'll keep a certain level of people who believe in your honesty, because it's gonna come out anyway. Yeah, yeah. The argument about why they were left off uh, up until today is a little bit odd too. In a statement, the campaign said it had made an error and would update its public list of campaign bundlers to include an accurate accounting. They said the error happened as it tallied the total amount of money the bundlers has raised. So the idea there is if they didn't believe that these people had passed the threshold to be considered a bundler, then they wouldn't appear on a list like this, which sort of makes sense. But some people who had previously disclosed in a document to donors were not listed on the Disclosure Friday. So they had been listed on things that were going to potential donors to say, hey, look at these people who support me, but not to the press who are trying to find out who it is. Exactly. Them. Somehow you can recognize them for, for reasons that'll help you, but you won't recognize them for reasons that won't help. It's like a bill collector. If they uh, they call you and then they'll be like, hey, you owe us $75.27. And like, man, you have it down to the penny. But um, if they owe you money, yeah. there's, some, there's always something wrong with them giving you your money back. That's yeah. all, it's a hang up, it takes a while, but they want it immediately. When it comes to the positive side, they're good. Yeah. When it comes to anything where they have to give something up, eh, I don't know, I can't figure it out. Yeah, yeah. and look, I, I, we, we've been talking a lot about Buttigieg recently and, and it's partially because he raised a ton of money in Q3 and he uh, he suddenly blew up in the polls. And like we've, we've been through a number of these elections. When someone who was not well known nationally doesn't have much of a record like from their past elections to run on. And there's no proposals they're making that you can plausibly say, this is why people are going crazy for them. It's like, I'll give you less than Medicare for all. I'll do something about climate change, but less. Why are all <laughs> of these Obama donors suddenly flocking to him? It makes you wonder what is filling up that gap? And for people who are really worried about the corrosive effect of money in politics, I start to wonder what promises are being made. And so I want as much information as possible. And so reporters, please stay on this campaign because that transparency is yeah. slow in coming. So it's like being stuck in the middle of trying to still have the old establishment approach while also trying to look like a new kind of young youthful energy into the party and into the presidential election. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for watching this clip from The Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's tyt.com slash John. Go to tyt.com slash John to sign up.